Hello fellow YouTubers, Mac here from our brand new channel dedicated to all things gaming and virtual reality. When I decided to set up my own YouTube channel, I wanted to make it as slick and professional as it could be. I also wanted it to have its own personality, something to make it stand out from the crowd, to get people coming back for my content as well as commenting and getting involved in the community. So one of the things I decided I wanted was a studio where I could do mixed reality gameplay. Does it sound easy? Well, firstly, I'm a complete novice at this and had never tried anything as ambitious. So I was learning as I went along, had quite a few hiccups on the way, a few equipment gremlins and some just plain weird occurrences. I decided to make this video and show you how I built my mixed reality studio from the ground up, step by step, until I got it right and then I honed it to a fine edge to give you, the viewer, the best mixed reality gameplay footage I could make. Do you love the idea of mixed reality? Don't forget to comment below. So let's dive in and get our metaphorical feet wet. The first thing you need for a mixed reality studio is a green screen. Now there are numerous videos on YouTube on how to set up a green screen from amateur to professional, but I'm a small outfit with limited funds, so I wanted to proceed on a small budget. Or you could read that as I'm a complete tight ass who didn't want to splash out too many beer tokens on any unnecessary gear. Right, so I could have painted the walls with chroma green, but that would have left us with like nothing on the floor. I could have used a pop-up green screen, but I wanted a whole body experience. So in the end, a cloth green screen seemed to fit our needs best. I purchased two Niwa 9x15 green chroma key muslin background screens. That's really difficult to say. From Amazon, I've put the links below. And I pinned them to the wall of my man cave. This created a large, relatively smooth green screen background. The next bit would lighting and I'll save you trolling through endless green screen tutorials by telling you this, lighting is the most important part of delivering a professional looking green screen experience. Light the green screen, light the subject. Now this gets rid of any weird artifacts you may get. I purchased two photography softbox studio lights for the green screen and an LED ring light for the subject lighting. The links are below in the description. For our camera I initially tried to use an Elgato cam link. 4K with a GoPro Hero 3. Now, despite saying these two were compatible, they weren't, and they caused endless problems down the line when I tried to calibrate my setup using the Live app. In the end, I used my Logitech Brio webcam, which I already had lying about. I set it to 1080p at 30 frames per second, and suddenly all the little glitches and annoying sound issues just disappeared, which was a massive relief, but also a little annoying as I'd spent over 200 pound or $250 on the Elgato and GoPro, so they're going on eBay. So that was the physical studio setup complete, now onto the software side. Go to Steam, sign into your account, go to the store and search for Live. Download and install this app. Now some older YouTube videos on setting up mixed reality using Live will tell you you also need to download another app called Live Viva. Now this is no longer necessary as the calibration is now done within the Live app. You will then need to download and install the OpenVR Advanced Settings tool. This is a neat little tool that you can access via the Steam button when you have a VR game running. And it allows you to rotate the view in VR so that, for example, in Pistol Whip, the camera is looking behind you up the street. It's amazing. It's all very clever stuff, and it's done by very clever people who are much cleverer than me. So once that's done, I would suggest you calibrate your play space. So if you're using Steam or Oculus, go through the room setup and calibrate your play space before going any further. This will prevent any small errors from creeping in when you finally do calibrate the Live app. When you're ready, we can move on to the actual setup of the Live. What do you think so far? Has it been worth the hassle? Don't forget to comment down below with your thoughts on this. Firstly, and I know this sounds like teaching your granny to suck eggs, but light up your green screen as if you're going to be filming. I lost a couple of hours, frustrating hours, trying to calibrate with the lights off, then filming some mixed reality footage with the lights on and getting calibration and tracking issues. I've made that dumb mistake so that you don't have to. So any thank yous can be written on the back of a £20 note and sent to the usual address. Open the Live app and you'll see this screen appear. If you need any help whatsoever, there is a very comprehensive guide here and also here with tips and troubleshooting advice, which is very handy. When you first launch the compositor, there'll be a watermark that says powered by live. This can be easily removed by joining the developers discord group and submitting a ticket to get the watermark removed. Now, don't worry, this won't cost you any money and I received my key literally within minutes. Open Steam, go to your library and in the bottom left corner, you'll see add game. 
Click on the plus sign and choose Activate a Product on Steam. This will open a page where you can input the key provided. It's all very straightforward. Now I would just like to point out here that the people behind Live are absolutely wonderful, patient human beings, especially when a total noob to Discord stumbles onto their pages and starts bleating away like a lost sheep. Now, that wasn't me, it was somebody else, but he was really annoying. Next thing is to install the Steam VR driver. If you're launching Live for the first time, you can highlight and click this box. Once it's done, restart Steam VR. Now we're going to launch the Live Compositor and you'll see something like this on your screen, depending on your setup. Look at the Steam VR panel and this virtual controller should pop up, along with the Compositor screen. So we're going to add a new camera, in my case a video camera. Select your device from the drop down screen, mine is the Logitech Brio 4K and it's running at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. Next up, select keying and fiddle with your colour background. It just so happens that my screen was calibrated exactly to the settings already loaded, but you can tweak it to suit your own background. Don't forget to light it properly first though. Then we're going to crop the image so that only the keyed out green screen can be seen. In my case, I had to pull the left and right sides in a bit and didn't have to adjust the top or bottom, but you may still have to. So we'll move on to the most sensitive part now and that's the actual calibration. For tracker I've chosen static and for me setting latency to 2 frames or 33 milliseconds seem to work best. Quickly save then begin calibration and you'll see this screen. The rest of the calibration is done in your headset so pop it on and let's dive into it. Once in your headset you'll be confronted by this scene. Pretty straightforward just press the trigger to get started. The large red cross is used to calibrate the position of your camera. Get as close to the lens of the camera without touching or moving the camera and pull the trigger. If you are in any doubt, just follow the guide in the top right of the scene. You are then going to calibrate the corners of your play space. Now, I'm not sure how important this is, but I tried to keep the controller in the same orientation for each trigger pull, i.e. facing the camera as best I could. This seemed to give me the most accurate results. As you can see from the video playing in the background, my first attempt was pretty spot on and I only needed to slightly adjust the x-axis to get the virtual controllers near one to one with the actual physical controllers. You can make any adjustments using position, latency, pitch, roll and yaw, but I would suggest if they aren't pretty close from the start, I'd go back and do the whole calibration again. Highlight save on the bottom right and you are ready to rock and roll. If all went to plan, you now have a functioning mixed reality setup and you can start filming and making great content. I've also heard that it makes you way more attractive, but uh, I've yet to test this theory out. So tell me how you got on in the comments down below. Was it pretty straightforward or did you hit a few gremlins? So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload any new content. I'll close with some footage I captured using this setup Thank you for watching till the end, and I'll see you on the other side. Discretion is advised.